In this video, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the timeline. I got a message from one of my viewers the other day inquiring about how to animate things like bulleted text so that the bullets show up in time with the narration. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do a bit of a deeper dive into the Captivate timeline in the all new Adobe Captivate. Let's take a look. Okay, we're literally going to start from scratch here. We've got a blank slide in Adobe Captivate 12. First thing I think we need is a media block, specifically an image. We'll go ahead and add that here. And I have an image already in mind. I'm just going to drag it from my desktop right into the slide here. I don't need the caption or the subtitle, so I'm going to turn those off. And I'm just going to double click on the image and just set this up to be a nice crop so that we can see this person who's in customer service. I guess she works in a car dealership there. We'll press save. And I'm just going to adjust the size of this first block to bring her closer to the top there. Next, I'm going to need a paragraph text block. So we'll add that in. And let's add a Actually, let's add a subtitle. We'll keep it small here. And this slide is going to be for our learning objectives. And I've already got some text for this, so I'm just going to copy and paste that into here. And we'll just resize this so it's nice and tight there. You can manually do this under alignment and spacing. If you want it extra tight here, we can just Take that right down to 10 pixels for the vertical padding here. Next, what we'll do is we'll add a few more of these paragraph blocks. So I'm going to copy the first bulleted text. And what we'll do is we'll add the bullets there. And you could customize this with different colored and style of bullets. But just to keep it simple for right now, I'm just going to keep that nice and short here. Here's a shortcut here. Once you've got one of these built, you can select the block and press Control D on your keyboard to make additional blocks. I may have to put in that bullet again, but that's okay. So I'm just going to paste in the rest of the text here. And we'll add our bullets back in as well. Just a moment. Okay, and last but not least, let's add an interaction block, a button block, and we'll move that to the right hand side of the page. And we'll call it our next button. So pretty simple, nothing too complicated with this slide here. Now, once you add the audio narration, it's nice to time these bulleted items to coincide with the words that are spoken in the audio narration. I happen to have an MP3 of the audio narration for this slide. I'm just going to click a couple of times in my scrap area there, and I'm just going to drag the audio clip from my desktop into the scrap area. And this gives me the opportunity to extend the duration of my slide. The default slide length, I believe, is three seconds, but it needs 24.4 seconds to match the audio. So I don't know why you would never agree to do this, but let's go ahead and press extend time. Now to time these objects according to the narration, we need to see our timeline. So clicking on the timeline bar is what we'll need to do in this case here. And you may wish to reduce the zoom of the slide so you can see more of the slide at once here. It's one of the things I find I often have to do is increase the area for my timeline. Now to help you see your audio, you can expand the blank slide, which is what we started with here. We haven't given the slide a name yet. We could do that. In fact, let's call this learning, and that's going to show up down here as well. Now I like to have a little bit of a break in sound from maybe a previous slide before we start hearing the narration. 
So what I typically do is I'll click on the ruler for my timeline and right click on the audio narration and select start audio from playhead position. And that not only adds a one second break in sound at the beginning of the slide, it pushes out the duration of the slide as well. You have, of course, the scroll bar at the bottom here to be able to, you know, to see the end or go back to the beginning of the slide. But there's also zoom controls for your timeline as well. So if you want to see the entire timeline, you can certainly do that. Now, what pushing it out to one second does is it gives me an opportunity to create a break in audio both before and after. Because now I'm going to click on the half second mark and then right click again and start audio from the playhead position. So I have half a second of no sound at the beginning and half a second of no sound at the end. It's just a thing I do. I like to have a nice natural flow. And I find if the audio starts too quickly, it doesn't seem very natural. So this is just something I do. Now, the first thing we're going to do, let's preview this a little bit. Somewhere around here, it's the first bullet's going to come up. So let's listen for that point. Upon completing this online course, you will be able to recognize. So I think it's right here around the four second mark. So I'm going to move my playhead to this position and I'm going to select the recognize basic definition of customer service component. This is part of the paragraph group, but I just want the component part to be selected here. And I can right click on this and use either this context menu to select sync with playhead, which is very similar to what we just did with the audio, or I can use the keyboard shortcut control L to sync with the playhead this particular object. In this case, I'll just select the item from the context menu. And so now recognize the basic definition of customer service will come in around here. Similarly, we can see the next sentence or next bullet showing up right around here. So we can select this object and you'll see that the paragraph group expands to show that object when I do that. And I'll do the same thing again. I'll sync with playhead and we'll just move across our timeline. Here's the third bullet point. I can see it there. You can, of course, preview this if you feel it's necessary. But you can usually, that's why I like to display the actual sound file so I can see where these things are happening here. So let's sync with playhead there. And we'll move to the last little bit here. Here's the fourth bullet in our, and you might need to play around with this a little bit. And we will also sync with playhead. And you know what? At the end of this narration, I have you know, press the next button to proceed right here. So I could actually have the next button not show up until that point there. So let's select the next button and we'll sync with playhead so it shows up there. Okay, now that we've got the timing all set up for our timeline here, let's actually preview this in our browser and make sure that the timing matches the narration and everything looks great. Upon completing this online course, you will be able to recognize the basic definition of customer service, identify the critical elements involved in providing customer service, recall the importance of responsiveness, empathy, and courtesy in customer interactions, and recognize examples of situations where understanding customer needs is vital. Press the next button to proceed. And of course, your learner could now press the next button and continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.